what we're going to be talking about today is the latest update, which is the 510 update, which includes Morbius and Dr. Voodoo. Okay. Uh, kindly enough, the only footage that we've got, well, gameplay footage of Morbius and Dr. Voodoo and the Dark Hunter team is through certain other streamers that are part of the Envoy program. Spoke the Valley Fly and he said it's fine to use his video, so we're going to watch the video with him, go through a couple of bits and just see how they do and looking at Morbius and Dr. Voodoo's kit. So let's get this started. His kit. Now, Morbius... He's a, he's, a, he's an important part of this team. He has a lot of focus, a lot of hit points. He's a controller. He has that high focus and damage. He can apply bleeds, flip defense up, flip defect, the deflects with his high focus. And yeah, you see this, you see this ISO 8 class on him, Striker. And he has a very strong basic, which is why I think Striker might be the best initial ISO 8 to test on him. Let's take a look at his kit and see why he is uh he is a beast. All right, his passive, the living vampire. He's gaining 30% extra piercing. He's gaining 20% drain. Dark Hunter allies are also gonna gain that drain. So that's good. That's gonna help them keep them surviving against these dirty war defense teams. And then on spawn, on war offense, if this character has three or more Dark Hunter allies, you're going to apply blind to the four highest damage city hero uh, enemies. Yes, screw you, heroes for hire. And if this character has four or more city hero enemies, gaining extra 300% focus, gaining 30% damage, and Dark Hunter allies are also going to gain extra damage so yeah this is this is extra against the heroes for hire they're getting more damage and they're applying blind on spawn that's gonna that's gonna help to survive that initial wave of uh, all those uh, attacks from the dirty heroes for hire all right so it's a very strong passive looks to counter my most hated team but this so with that obviously straight away all their ults are pretty much going to be used up without actually hitting anyone so Colleen Wing, Shang-Chi especially, and obviously Misty Knight, all three of their ults are going to be going off and doing absolutely nothing and missing first turn. So that's massive. That's a big, big, big thing. This also does that. Now, this has a very high cooldown, unfortunately. You're starting with five energy, total of seven energy. So probably not going to give a lot of viability outside of this game mode. But yeah, this is going to work very, very good against the dirty heroes for hire. You're going to Attack the primary target, 450% damage. You're going to flip defense ups and deflects. You're going to change to four adjacent targets. 310% uh, damage, plus you're flipping uh, deflects also to those uh, four adjacent targets. And on war offense, this is where it gets very crazy, guys. If this character has three or more Dark Hunter allies, you're going to apply Trauma. I like Trauma and Heal Block and Disrupt it for two turns to City Heroes. Primary targets applying Trauma and Heal Block for two turns to all City Hero and Secondary targets. It's that Trauma and that Heal Block that really kills those heroes for hire. Uh, counter attacks breaks that. And on War Offense, this attack cannot be counter attacked or blocked. I love these kind of moves that just screw the heroes for hire. Let's move on to a special Vampiric Spread. Or is this Vampiric? spread let me know in the Vampiric. comments which is the correct uh way to pronounce it three out of three so you're starting with this very very early early use in the battle attacking the primary and adjacent targets only 250 percent damage you're getting three bleeds to these primary and secondary targets and that is pretty much it very uh very weak special honestly uh, it's a very strong ultimate weak special i like the basic though attacking the primary target uh, you're for 200% damage. If the primary target has bleed, you're going to steal 10% of health from the primary target. You're going to get that back. You're redistributing to themselves. And this is why that striker ISO 8 class might be good. Uh, also going to apply a bypass heal block, excuse me. And on war offense, you're going to get two bleeds as well. And you're still getting these bleeds. You're still getting the health steal. Uh, even with the counter and assist chance. So striker might be the best class for him. And so looking through Morbius's kit, I mean, for war offense, he looks he looks fucking fantastic. Let's be realistic here. Um, the issue is the cooldown for his ultimate is going to take too long um, if you're using them anywhere else. So outside of war, is he is he worth putting much investment in? Personally, can't see it purely because of the ult. Um, I mean, his basic is very good as well, and obviously his special you start off with. 
So when you come around to the second turn to be using that, you're going to be draining from them straight away because they will have bleeds and it will just constantly, what it will be doing by the looks of things is draining and healing themselves and adding bleeds continuously. So it's pretty good. But again, the main issue there is how long it takes for his ult to come around. And let's take a look at all the stats based on four. So let's uh, skip that. What's he gone to? Bravo Voodoo. Dirty, dirty heroes for hire. Let's move ahead to Bravo this Voodoo. other guy, Dr. Voodoo. Dr. Voodoo. I was, we were wondering if he would be called Brother Voodoo or Dr. Voodoo. He's been known as both in the game, in the comics, and I guess he's going to be known as Dr. Voodoo in the game. He also has extra high focus. He has a lot of hit points. He has a very large health pool. Uh, he's a very survivable support character. He does a lot of healing, and he has a large health pool, so he's going to be... Uh, you're going to be able to take a lot of damage with him. And that large health pool also affects his healing as well, which is why healer might be the best ISO 8 class for him because he's, uh, he's going to make his heals even stronger. All right. He has got a very strong passive here. All right. There's a wall of text, guys. Bear with me as I read through this whole thing. Gaining 5% speed for each death proof on this character up to a maximum of 5 when this character drops below 50% max health. Gaining a death proof up to a maximum of 5. So he can get very, very fast. The depending on how many death proofs you could have on him. When, it, when any ally dies, gaining a death proof for a maximum of five, apply offense up to self and all Dark Hunter allies. That's good. When five enemies have speed up, self and allies gain 30% crit chance and crit damage and on war offense on spawn. So this character go, has... Let me just go back to that for a second. Apply offense up to self and all Dark Hunter. When an ally dies, you gain plus one death proof up to a maximum of five and obviously that's where he's going to be getting his speed ups and that and how he dies normally what it will say is excluding obviously the minions so by the looks of it i've got a funny feeling that this guy is going to be working with uh, it will, well it will be counting for minions as well touch wood if that is the case then we look like we've got a new home for someone like ultron um someone like hella where people are taking out minions very quickly and they could be adding death proof. It would be interesting to see if that is the case and that that's just the team they can go on. Um, very, very interesting indeed. For allies, that's good. When five enemies have speed up, self and allies gain 30% crit chance and crit damage and on war offense on spawn. If this character has three or more Dark Hunter allies generate two ability energy for four random Dark Hunter allies or self that were not at full energy. All right. I'm out of breath after reading that passive, but that is a very strong one. Does some good things, and I think all of these things help to counter those dirty heroes for a hire. All right, so that is a strong passive. Oh, this is a very, very big, big, big oh. cooldown on his ultimate there. Eight energy. You're starting off with four, so not using this on turn one unless he's getting some extra energy from some passives. But um, yeah, I guess he can get it with some passives here. Uh, I guess you could use this on turn two, I guess, if you're having the passive. All right. You're going to steal 20% health from the enemies, redistributing 150% of the health stolen to all Dark Hunter allies. This will bypass heal blocks, so kind of like that Minerva. You're going to clear all negative effects from all Dark Hunter allies, so... That's a good one as well. War offense, applying immunity to all mystic allies, and it ignores death proof. That seems very, very strong. Long. So again, we go back just a little bit more. There we go. Uh, that in war offense, apply immunity to all mystic allies. Again, if it is a case that he's been going to be getting death proof on himself and the speed up through Hella's minion. Hella looks like it's going to be a class choice to go as the the other option on the end of this team instead of Mordo. And obviously I'll explain in a minute why Mordo will be the option that most people will likely drop. Proof that seems very very strong. Long long large health steal uh, you're getting you're getting the immunity looking very good. All right, this is another three out of three move here, just like Morbius on the special. You're uh, you so you can use this on turn one, low cooldown. You're gonna apply ability block defense down on the primary target, applying defense down 
worked with the adjacent target, so that's going to help with that kill. That ability to block is also very good. Mind control to adjacent enemies to attack the primary target. The controlled enemies get plus 30% damage to this attack. Barrier self and Dark Hunter allies by 30% of this character's max health. Barrier adjacent non-Dark Hunter allies by 20% of this character's max health. So uh, the adjacent allies are going to matter. Um... Yeah, so this this is looking good, and this attack cannot be blocked. So good special. The the placement is going to matter for Dr. Voodoo. And last but not least, his basic. You're going to transfer Death Proof from the target to himself. He's needing a lot of these Death Proofs here. Attacking the primary target, 300% damage, and heal self and Dark Hunter allies by 8% of this character's max health. That's a strong basic as well. Both of these guys have very strong basics. Uh, you know, I, I, I said healer class, but maybe striker class, depending if he's doing this healing uh, all, the, all the time, especially with that large health pool. All right. Health, 475,000. Uh, right, now we'll go on to... I will talk about the uh, other three in a moment, but let's actually have a look at a video of them in action against Infinity Watch and Heroes for Hire. Just so you can get an idea just how good these guys are. because That is pretty much it for Mordo. All right, and are. here they are in battle as we take a look at the new Dark Hunters team challenging the Eternals and an Infinity Watch combo. Oh, that looks so hard. Now, what was told to us about this Dark Hunters team? They are one of the top war offense teams. They're a tier below Weapon X, though. They are designed to beat every war team except for the new Young Avengers team. And since so there you go. A lot of people have been worried about thinking that okay, we're gonna we're gonna end up doing a young Avengers team, only for them to be torn apart by these guys. Okay, this young Avengers team is probably gonna be last in the same amount of time as um, Heroes for Hire in War as the Mayor. Um, so at the moment, I wouldn't worry whatsoever. These guys look like they're gonna be absolutely fine dealing with everyone else. Probably, probably going to be punching down. They could probably take on the Young Avengers, um, but your Weapon X are probably going to be the only thing that can really do anything to the Young Avengers. Hence, why we haven't even seen a video of them taking on the Young Avengers yet. So they don't have a legendary like the Weapon X does with Omega Red. This team is designed to be more accessible to newer players. Who knows how long it's going to take for Morbius and Dr. Voodoo to be farmable, though. But uh, the other characters looking like they are very easily uh, accessible because they're older characters. Now, Weapon X is supposedly still going to be able to beat the Young Avengers. It's going to be a tougher battle, but Weapon X could beat them, which means that the Dark Hunters, now you could use them to punch across on your heroes for hire. Uh, Mordo does not have the Dark Hunters tag, like I said, when we're reviewing his kit, but he is balanced to work with this team here. All right, there is the penis there. There's Ghost Rider does. What does he do to Cersei? Not much. Cersei gets all of her health back, gets that little, get that little extra hit there. And these guys, oh, here we go. Is this the health steal from Dr. Voodoo? Gets a defense down. Oh, this is that special. They're getting Cersei attacked by Gamora. And it looks like we're in 1x speed here. Let's go forward in the battle just a little bit. See what happens here. I think we've seen enough of their animations and everything. I just want to see who wins here, actually. Because sometimes, sometimes the footage, they don't win. All right, it looks like they're still surviving. They took a long time because you got to kill them twice. All right, and this is, this is, uh, I'm liking the way this battle is going. We have one more battle to watch. And that is against those dirty heroes for a higher right. It looks like Dr. Voodoo is going to finish them off. Oh, there's the death proof. There it is. And I think they have this battle in control. They've already taken out the Eternals. Let's go look at them versus my most hated team. This dirty heroes for a higher. How long is it going to take them to beat this team? All right, so they're getting. And this is where you're going to see just how good. Morbius spawn is um, against Heroes for Hire straight off the bat. Rex them. Gonna get a lot of blinds. Let's see how they do on this opening turn. There's all the blinds. That's from the passives there. All right. And yes, Colleen doesn't hit. I like that. Let's see. Misty, does she? Oh, she misses. I like that as well. More missing. I like that. All these turns from the Heroes for Hire not getting hit. Not getting hit on this Dark Hunters team. This might be my new favorite team. 
This might be just because they countered the Dirty Heroes Fryer. Still, still hitting with all those blinds. We don't have that trauma on us yet. We need, we need uh, Morbius. We need Morbius to apply it to all of them. We need him to do his ultimate, and then it'll be game over. We're just trying to last through some turns here, I guess. There comes Iron Fist. I love when this, I love, I love when that happens. I love when he does that big wind up and he ends up missing. Whoever it is, Ghost Rider or whoever, I, that, that is that is such a satisfying move in their game. All right, there is Morbius. Is he gonna flip everything? No, oh, he gets one, two. This is this might be my favorite move in the game. Trauma, all the trauma and the heal blocks. Lovely, lovely. Let's see, let's see if they could just get all these charges off of them now. Look at this, all the bleeds, all of that stuff. Ghost Rider going after Colleen Wing. Interesting choice there, Ghost Rider, but here is his penance there. And oh, all the bleeds. Does they does they remove all of the charges there? Let's see. This is this will be good. We're, we're going at a very slow 1x speed, though. Hopefully, we can get a little faster with this footage next time. All right, there it goes. Iron or... Just in reply to uh, one of the questions I have just been shot over by one of the people in my alliance. Shout out, Stoner Dave Avengers. Um, he's saying, obviously, the gut feeling that he thinks that, that this is going to be a till gear challenge and obviously a team for newbies. Do you know what? Possibly, possibly. I think the only person in that team you're going to be looking at taking all the way up the till gear will be Dr. Voodoo, just because his kit is very, very good. Uh, the others I probably wouldn't. Um, yeah. It'll be interesting to see what people are having to do with this team. I mean, I think it's going to be a case of putting everyone up the till gear if you want to take on someone like the Young Avengers. I think other than that, Tier 14, 15 will probably be able to do a decent punch up by the looks of it. I mean, straight away you see there the big thing with Heroes for Hire is how they start off. The blind is going to cause absolute havoc for them. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, the Till Gear Challenge when they eventually do that. Yeah, more than likely. More than likely, it will be interesting though to see. But they, I like the look of them. Morbius's animation looks fucking awesome. Absolutely love his animation. There goes uh, Shang Chi attacking Luke Cage, and we don't have the, all the bleeds he's setting off yet. Colleen Wing is down to one charge. More bleeds. More removing the charges. There it goes. There goes some of the charges. There, Mordo is coming. Stuns, blinds. Does anyone get stunned? Oh, that was the heal block. Excuse me. That was. The, I think that was the ultimate. Here we go. All right, they are looking like their health is going down. Their charges are going down. Oh, oh, he took a big hit there. But yes, she is almost dead. Charges are gone off of Shang Chi. Shang Chi is almost gone. Once we get these characters, oh, Ghost Rider hanging on by a thread there. What is going to happen? Oh, Ghost Rider dies. Ghost Rider is dead. I think they're still going to manage to get through this, though. Oh, Mort I thought Mortal was going to die there. She is stunned. This is not a, this is not as uh, cut and dry as I thought. There's still a little, there's still some question in this battle. Colleen is down. Once Sean goes down, though, I think we're good. Sean and Luke Cage both don't have any taunts or don't have any charges there. Still a few charges on Misty, and there goes the last charge for Iron Fist. All right, so if they could kill Sean right now. There we go. Kill Sean. This is the basic. Nice animations. I got to say, they do a nice job with animations. Oh, there's Sean. There's Iron Fist. This battle is pretty much done, and that looks like a lovely, lovely win, beating those dirty heroes for hire. And I got to say, just because of what they do. So shout out the Valley for that. So, yeah, they do look. Very, very good against Heroes for Hire. So if we have a look at a recent update from the patch notes as well. Arriving over the course of this release, four new characters which we all know about now. Echo, Kate Bishop, Morbius and Dr. Voodoo. Uh, we've got stat improvements for Elsa, Ghost Rider, Mordo, American Chavez, Miss Marvel and Squirrel Girl. This one, most people would have seen in the... Um, when they've got logged into the game, obviously Jubilee's new outfit looks fucking sick. Bishops as well, the more orders one looks nice. 
and I haven't just seen the uh, Killmonger one yet, so that'd be interesting. Assemble a top squad with limited time. Spirit Slayer trait for Dr. Voodoo. Interesting. This has been out for a while, and people have been wondering what the event was actually going to be for these characters. Um, obviously, the Nowhere Heist. Um, so there you go. It's Doc, Doc Ock, Invisible Woman, Star-Lord, Rocket, Rocket Raccoon, and Kate, Kitty Pride. Uh, and it'll be a mythic Flash event to work. And dark promo credits, Elite 7 credits, gold, and obviously more. Hopefully they give quite a lot of dark promo credits. So push people further on to go get their Doom at 5 red star. And then uh, if they really want to, Ultron do them up a bit as well. Uh, I know I've got a, someone in my alliance who's a big Ultron fan as well, not naming names. Uh, obviously emojis are now in the game for a lot of people little things like that do make the difference and that definitely makes a difference to me roster button not being obscured we've got a few bug fixes as well Adam Warlock's avatar of life for people who've only got them level 1 and 2 ok safeguard will apply now uh, Ravager Stitcher's basic ability disintegrator will not clear on when uh, enemy when can't be revived when eliminated by attack to simple yeah to simplify the ability defense down is no longer required to deny revive we've updated the text to clarify the combat behavior Gamora's unique gear piece has been up piece has been updated from the incorrect name God Slayer to the correct name infinity blade the image has also been updated uh, text update, we removed the plus symbol from the description of Swarm's passive buzz kill as we can't have more than stacks of four for charge. The combat behavior was corrected and remains unchanged. Ironed out animation for Cloak's Cape. Cope? Cape? Cope? Jesus. Cloak's Cape. There we go. Uh, improved X-rays gear piece was incorrectly uh, appearing twice in the blue gear raid orb. Okay, uh, alpha no alpha raid nodes located on the far right of the map were difficult to select while the mission info window was open. Yep, that's sorted now. Heli carrier room bonuses information was overlapping the enemy room display. So quite a lot of changes there. Good changes, simple ones. Uh, chat text was extending out the chat box. Uh, costume equipped to war defense characters were not being displayed. Uh, what else have we got? Blah blah. Oh, Captain Sam's performing team ups. Attacks with Iron Man instead of Captain America when all three eyes oh, on a battle. Okay, if that needed to be changed, you know, let let them do what they want to do. Let them live their lives. So we got the uh, updates for Elsa. Obviously, her health getting upgraded at thirty two percent, damage by twenty nine, armor by fifty. Uh, focus by 4% and resistance by 29. She's got a rework on her basic, so now it's gone up by 75% pierce instead of 45. And again, plus bonus attack 5 times for 75% piercing. A special trick shot, uh, that's gone up by 20% 20, uh, 20 damage uh, for the primary target. And another twenty percent damage, ignoring taunt and stealth. So little, little rework. Not bad. The ultimate. Okay. Uh, this one obviously on old version. Gain offense up for two turns. Attack primary target and a date Jason for two hundred fifty percent damage plus twenty five percent per supernatural ally. That's obviously been changed. So now damage has gone up by thirty percent damage. <laughs> Uh, gone up by another twenty percent on per damage per what will be Dark Hunter ally. Uh, characters killed by this cannot be revived either, which is a big one, which is going to be very very nice. Um, on war offense, if this character is three or more Dark Hunter allies, then this attack cannot be blocked. Nice, that's quite nice for her ultimate. Okay, and then obviously her passive. With that, uh, on a miss or an ally miss, if this character has three or more, su three or more supernatural allies, attack the target to 100% damage, which is exactly the same as it was above. Um, on enemy dodge, attack the enemy for 270. On enemy dodge, exactly the same. Okay, 
I don't know why they put that in if it's exactly the same. They should have just add it. I don't know why they do that. The only difference is, obviously, you've got the gain plus 20% accuracy per Supernatural or Duck Hunter ally. That's it. Ghost Rider updates. Uh, base stats. Health's gone up by 5%. Damage by 26%. Armor by 57%. Focus by 33 And resist by 36%. Obviously, the pennant stare. Um, old was attack primary target for 500%. PSM classifying. Apply offense down and defense down. If charged, this attack gains 200% drain and lose one charge. Difference with this is that uh, if the charge, this attack cannot be blocked. So, a little bit of a difference, nothing major. Okay. Um, in regards to this, I believe the only thing that's been done differently is the fact that his gain plus 40% focus, Mystic Alloy gain another 40% focus. I think that is everything that's been changed. Um, Dark Hunt has obviously now come into uh, this as well. And I believe that is everything. And obviously Dark Hunter for gaining 40% max health. And obviously Dark Hunters do as well now. Mordo. Not really interested in them. Again, health up by 49, damage 38, armor by 50, focus by 46, and resist by 55. Okay. Um, is old, was stun primary target, plus 50% chance to blind, up to three targets, 50% chance to slow up to two targets. Uh, that has stayed exactly the same, but on more offense now. This cannot be blocked. If this character has four or more mystic alloys, the chance to blind increased by 75%. So this is not, still not even guaranteed. Okay, as mentioned by Valley as well. Uh, okay, obviously, we've got the the uh, Mordo doesn't have the Dark Hunt attack. Okay, so he is not the fifth member for this team, he's just getting an update. I guarantee we can see another character. I think a lot of people can probably guess roughly who they can end up seeing coming in, which hopefully is going to end up being Blade. Okay. Hopefully it's going to end up being Blade. So if we take now a little look over to Marvel Strike Force. Can run through a few things and we can have a little bit of music. See, a lot of the uh, guys seem to be enjoying the emojis in the group. I think everyone's enjoying them. It's the little things, it's the little things. So, if we have a look. There they are, the new characters. I mean, Morbius looks fucking brilliant, doesn't he? As I stated before, a lot of people were making comments about Kate Bishop. Um, a couple of other, the, a couple of the other streamers were saying that Kate Bishop ain't going to be worth taking up. Won't waste your time with her. Blah blah blah. Um, personally, looking at her, just having a look through her kit, she's going to be fucking decent on tech raids as well. It might even be worth taking into. Um, Dark Dimensions, purely because some of the, I mean, yeah, let's have a look at her basic. This will be one of the main reasons why. Okay, attack primaries that she's doing piercing damage. Uh, if this is charged, gain extra 25% crit chance for this attack. This attack cannot, cannot be blocked or dodged. Okay, so that's going to be nice. And then obviously. She's going to be gaining charge. So if this card does not have charge, she gains charge. Okay, and then that means then she can go to use her ult. Uh, if this character has charged, apply an offense up for two turns to self and all young Avengers. So it would be herself in tech raids. Okay, the other thing she does as well is flipping positive effects on each target to negative effects. 
Okay, so again, very, very nice. Clip off that. And obviously, this is what you need for the charge. If this character has charge, which you will be getting from that, apply blinds to the enemy with the highest damage. Um, and then in total, you end up applying, I think, what, four? Is it two? There you go, apply blind for two turns to the enemy. So she's the only person in the game that does blind um, for two turns. And two random negative effects for two turns to all other enemies. So. That's going to be massive. So for me, she looks like a someone I would personally be looking at taking into um, tech raids, tech doom raids. She will probably be the one that goes in over my tech raid team. Consists of Doc Ock, uh, Doom. Um, it will be Lady Deathstrike. Uh, Kestrel and uh, Nebula and obviously Nebula will be the one that comes out and she will be going in so just to go through the kit as well see this is where I think because it's stipulated here on non summoned ally death okay whereas Voodoo's Basic. I was getting. Can't remember which one it was now. But every time a ally dies, he's getting um, death proof. And obviously, with death proof, he gets speed up. So I'm assuming someone like Hella is going to be perfect as the fifth character for that team over Mordo at the moment, which will certainly be interesting. That's what I'm predicting anyway. So we've got an hour before we got war. The latest updates have arrived. Echo joins the fight. Thank you for fuck all. So and let's see any worthwhile waffles at the moment. Now I've got Echo. So I think Echo is the only one that's really worth even even potentially looking at that, it's the same deal as it is all the time. Hundred chance to get her. I mean, I could get. Her. I mean, been paid quite well at work. Do I? Don't I? Do I? Don't I? I mean, normally, normally I wouldn't even contemplate doing that. Wouldn't even contemplate it. But it's tempting. It is tempting. It is very tempting. I think at the moment that is, unless they run a raid, then I'll jump into a raid quick. Yeah, yeah. Let's join, strike two. Don't want to do that first. We'll get Doom out of the way. Strike two, three. Join. I believe. Try and remember the asylum in the middle. Let's go.
when it decides to load, because there's been a big update now, it's probably going to take about an hour and a half. We'll say this is one team. Again, hearing people saying about not going for them. Ah, oh, you don't need these symbiotes, blah blah blah, because it's just a shut up. These guys are so much better on raids than symbiotes. Um, that's good. Slow. Okay. Mm. Yeah, what thinking? Get rid of the ulcers. This is why you get rid of the elses quickly. Purely because they're just fucking irritating, so let's get them. One down. Web warriors are class. Web Warriors have been made because they do absolutely rinse this. Um, I think they've been done for we do made free. I think that's where they're gonna be vile. So, again, I want to be getting blinds and that on him, doesn't work. Slow it down. Let's get the king again. That's just bloody rude.
fudge this. Why does it keep going that fucking side? Fudge this. I have completely fudged this and been a fucking idiot. Why on earth did I do that for? Just being amateurish. Yeah, we're gonna lose this now. For some reason does not like landing. See, once you lose Scarlet, didn't want to know a bit of Completely fucking fuck this right up. That is terrible. That is terrible. That is absolute garbage for anyone, any kids watching at home. Don't. Don't. Forward close this for a second. And then I am going to load it back up. So bear me a moment, that's fucking awful. That is exactly what not to do. There's new costumes for Jubilee and Bishop, which look fucking brilliant. No idea what that Belen is doing there. No more. Mordo looks class. Doctor Booty looks good. Kate okay, Bishop looks pretty sick. Obviously, I will check out uh, Killmonger's new kit in a minute. But first, I need to do that now properly. Fucking stupid. Absolute stupid. Do you know what? I've not had an issue before walking that node or walking the boss node either. Just being a fucking idiot. Not paying a fucking attention to what I'm doing. Right then. Let's go again. Wouldn't surprise me if someone else has done it and done it properly because they know what they're fucking doing and not being an idiot. Sorry for the uh, bad language, guys.
this one can go. There we go. Now, spread everything, please. So I'll speak by one moonlight. Now out of the way, I'll be alright and I feel good about myself. I say do it fucking properly the first time. Fucking stupid that was. Absolutely stupid. Hopefully the boss is still there and someone hasn't just walked it already. Oh no, I've got time to see the boss. Nice. For some reason, by the way, I see people do it on it. I got, I got off it a while ago doing it, but I still see a lot of people and a lot of streamers for some reason they think so obviously doom if you put stun on doom it gets rid of it okay if you put trauma on him and then you put stun you cannot get rid of the stun stun doom Stuck. Still on Doom. The best bit about this. Probably should have slowed him about. There you go. Spread. 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 Bit of toast. Spread the hell out of that. Don't need to do anything. Any of the others I'm going to just take Doom out. There you go, now hammer away at Kestrel, the little bitch. That's just bloody rude. So, let's reduce the speed bar on Sharon Carter. down get the shame car 
myself on channel. Six Red Star Echo, nice one, Stone Avenger man. Great going hard, oh, could lose this one minute. Gotta be careful, gotta be smart. Gotta be smart, not be an idiot. Nice going, Stone Avenger. That's what I like. Boom, I suppose. Boom, I suppose. No, mate, that was exceptional. Speeding this up now. Such a slow animation, man. Seconds. <laughs> this is going to be tough. These animations are taking too long. These animations are taking too long. No, I'm not going to do it because this last. Oh, literally on the last second. Those animations. Ah, oh, there we go. Nice Paul Stone Avenger mate. That does remind me though that I should be doing my Red Star pools now. 65 orbs, let's go. Don't know where that's come up. No, some people do know, um, some people do certain theories of that. I can't bother to red star club. Not bad. I settle with four because the one I really want five or six on okay let's take it down to 55 Take the four, can't be bothered to do her up anymore. Can't be bothered. Better use of energy. Uh, trying to think who we need to do right now. What we can do is try and max 
that sound like? We've got two more hundreds. We're doing some things Marvel as well. Absolutely horrendous offer. the brawlers seeing we've used so much energy on brawlers recently um, with the web warriors So we've got some interesting characters now coming out. Very, very interesting. Happy at Mark 4 Red Star Pool. Obviously not as good as some people, eh? Uh, but again, I think I'm just going to leave out 4 Red Star. Don't really think I want to be doing about much more. I think the one in that team that's going to be anywhere near important is going to be um, Kate Bishop. Kate Bishop. She does Price. This will be interesting. But I'll take my four and I'll leave it there. And then I believe. Oh no, I've got two. And I've got one. One four. Yeah, one four. And then I've got my six that I'm waiting for for the next legendary, if they're good. But like I said, guys, that is everything to, for today. Uh, thanks for tuning in and watching. And I'll catch you again soon. Cheers, guys.